Welcome to the rules of the check ride part six, decision making process during check ride. Please, if you haven't watched the introduction, the psychology of the pilot check ride, or the rules of the check ride parts one to five, please exit now and watch them first. This video is follow a sequence and viewed otherwise will lessen its effects and may confuse you. First question. If the weather conditions at the time of the flight are questionable, will the examiner help me make a decision? The examiner will not be involved in the decision-making process. However, you may obtain weather information from any other source that you think may help you with the go-no-go -no -go decision. If the existing weather conditions are beyond your experience and limitations, you should cancel the flight. No questions asked. Remember, don't bite more than you can chew, especially at the time of the flight. This is a very important issue because the aircraft has to be flown solely by your experience and limitation, not the examiner's. However, you might share with the examiner the reasons why you decided to cancel. In essence, all the examiner needs to know is, are we going flying or not? If there is any airworthiness issue at the time of the flight, will the examiner help me make a decision? Again, the examiner will not be involved in the decision-making process. Whether the airworthiness situation is mechanical, maintenance, uh, require placards, records, the decision-making process is basically the same as the weather decision process. You can obtain information from anybody that will help in making the right decision, except the examiner. It is solely your responsibility to make sure that the airplane is airworthy and to make all the go no go decisions. Let me repeat that. It is solely your responsibility to make all the decisions before and during the flight. You need to think of the examiner as a passenger, not a pilot, not an instructor. Will the examiner try to override any of my PIC decision. The examiner will not interfere with the decisions made by the PIC as long as there are good decisions. However, if the PIC makes a decision that contradicts any regulation or recommendation or adversely affects the safety of the flight, then the examiner will intervene. If the examiner must take corrective action, the applicant usually will be disqualified. Will the engine be completely shut down during the engine failure procedure task? During engine failure evaluation, if only a partial power emergency is introduced, it will be done by partially retarding the throttle to the desired RPM. In a single engine airplane, if a total power failure scenario is introduced, it will be done by completely retarding the throttle. Neither the mixture control nor the fuel selector will be used. However, in a multi-engine airplane, the throttle will always be used to simulate the failure when below 3,000 feet AGL. When above 3,000 feet AGL, the mixture control may be used to fail the engine. The fuel selector will never be used. Next question. During the engine failure task in a single engine airplane, will there be a suitable landing area within range of the aircraft? There are always will be at least one suitable emergency landing area within gliding distance from where the simulated engine failure occurs. Remember, the main purpose of this task is to evaluate if you can fly the airplane from the point of simulated engine failure to where a reasonable safe landing could be made. The engine will be cleared periodically in order to avoid a real power failure. The examiner will call the go around no lower than 800 feet AGL. All you have to do is concentrate on getting the airplane to the landing site. On the go around, the power will be applied smoothly, just like in a regular takeoff, in order to avoid any faltering of the engine. Next question. Who will be responsible for dealing with an emergency in flight? 
In an actual non-life-threatening emergency, you will handle it. In an actual life-threatening emergency, both you and the examiner will handle it. The check ride is no longer the issue. Surviving is. The check ride stops. Whenever the examiner simulates an emergency, it should be treated as a real emergency regardless of its nature. It is your responsibility to address all emergencies and to try to solve the problem. You must make a decision as to the pertinent course of action to follow. Either continue flight, land as soon as practicable, land as soon as possible, or return to the airport. These decisions are to be made without the examiner's input. What will happen if I don't treat the emergency the way the examiner would? Do not be concerned about doing what the examiner may do or likes. You really don't know that. Do what you think is correct and what you have been taught. Simply because your decision will be graded on whether or not you achieve an appropriate, safe outcome and that the outcome was never in doubt, not on whether you choose to do what the examiner would have chosen. Remember, there is more than one way to skin a cat.